Hello and welcome along to the first in a series of videos which is going to focus on looking at installing Chocolaty within an organisational context. Now, why is that important? When you start using Chocolaty, there are a number of things you need to think about. So, for example, the out-of-the-box Chocolaty will work using the community repository. That's where it will in download and install the packages from. Now, in an organizational context, we don't recommend that you continue to use the community repository. And instead, you want to look at internalizing and using and having those packages uh, hosted within your own internal repository. Now, the reasons for that are, one, you then have a vetted list of packages that you have approved and you want your uh, employees and users to, to be able to install. And the other part of that is consistency. Once you've got all those packages internalized, then they're always going to work. They're not going to be subject to uh, network outages or uh, upstream service disruptions. There are other things to take into consideration when you start thinking about things like Chocolate Agent and allowing self-service installation of packages onto machines, again, from those uh, vetted and approved list of packages that you have on your internal feeds. And then you can start looking at things like Chocolate Central Management, uh, being able to take all of that audit data from each of those machines, bringing it up into a central location so you know across your environment what packages are installed, what packages are out of date, etc. Uh, and then with the latest release of Chocolate Central Management, we can start doing deployments onto those machines. We can say, I want to install this package onto this set of machines, or I want to upgrade this package across all of these machines, or you can go to a more complex uh, deployment where you're actually ha have a workflow. You're doing something on one server, doing something on another, and then stitching it all together. Now, in order to get all of that set up, there's quite a few moving parts. So if we look at the uh, community repository, the, the community website, apologies, there is a uh, documentation that steps, walks you through exactly what you need to do here. So it's fairly comprehensive. There's lots to it. So what this series of videos is going to be about is about taking this documentation and uh, executing each of the steps on there to get a fully set up system. Now, the way that I'm going to start doing that is I have a machine here, which I'm referring to as my workstation machine. And what this will do is it will serve as the starting point for setting up this environment. Now, I personally like to think in pictures. So what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to try and draw what I'm going to try to achieve in these series of videos. So the first thing that we've got here, as I said, is I've got this uh, workstation machine. So the workstation machine is going to be the one one of the machines on the my environment that has access to the internet. This will be able to connect to the internet. It'll be able to get packages, put them where they need to be, etc. So this is where I'm going to do my initial setup. The other machine that I'm going to bring into the environment is a machine that has Jenkins on it. So for those that don't know, Jenkins is a a continuous integration platform. It, it's used typically when you're doing compilation of source code, but it's also a very useful process for doing automated scheduled tasks. So one of the things once we've got this environment set up is we're gonna to want to have a, uh, a mechanism, a way of ensuring that we have the latest packages internal in our own uh, internal repository. So speaking of a repository, we're gonna need another machine here that has a uh, a NuGet feed, which is essentially what uh, Chocolate uses. So on here, we're going to use uh, a Nexus server. So there are other options available. Nexus is the one that I'm choosing to use. Uh, other ones being uh, Artifactory, ProGet, etc. There's various different ones you can do. So what's going to happen here is Jenkins is going to look at my internal repository and it's going to say, what packages do I have? And then it's going to look out to the internet, to the community repository, and it's going to find out if there are any new packages available. And then it's going to bring down those packages and bring them into internal into my internal repository so that I can then consume them. So with those servers set up, what we'll then need to look to do is we'll then need to look to set up uh, my CCM environment. So CCM is made up of three things. There's a website portion, there is a, a service portion, and then there are, there's also a database. So these three servers combined make up what we refer to as CCM. Now, <clears throat> Depending on your environment, those services could live on a single server. But in terms of the architecture that I'm going to uh, put forward here, in terms of best practices, etc., I'm going to install them on separate machines, and I'm going to have them talk to each other across those se uh, separate machines. And then ultimately, uh, the most important part, which is where we're actually trying to get to, is then we're going to have 
a collection of machines. So these are our client machines. These are the ones that our employees are using. And these are the ones that we need to install Chocolate onto. We need to uh, deploy packages onto. We need to take all of that audit information and bring it back into CCM. So there's going to be, um, in a typical environment, there's going to be tens, hundreds, thousands of these machines. So in terms of what we're going to do in this uh, series of videos, is really we're just going to look at one of them. So we're going to take one of those and then onto there, we're going to install the chocolate agent and we're going to look at what we need to do to set up a self-service installation of packages. Uh, we might also look at using, we might also look at using uh, chocolate GUI. So we'll install chocolate GUI here and we'll set that up in a way that we can, uh, rather than having the user use the command line, we'll use the uh, user interface that we have for Chocolatey. And then we'll also look at doing a few other things uh, to show how Chocolatey can be used within the environmental context. So the important part here is that in terms of uh, our setup, these machines here, the workstation machine and the Jenkins machine, they'll kind of be sitting in what I refer to as the DMZ. They'll have access to the internet, so they'll be able to uh, pull things from the internet and bring them internal to, within the organization. But the way that we need, we want to think about everything in this setup initially is that everything else is going to be uh, internal only. They won't have access to the internet directly. So we'll have to look at things like switching off and disabling the access to the community repository and use only the, the feeds that we make available on our Nexus machine. And then once everything's set up, um, we will look at actually doing some deployments from our CCM machine and pushing those down onto our client machines. So the intention with these videos is I'm going to be using that documentation that I referred to earlier, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through in uh, manageable chunks, uh, getting everything set up. Now, uh, it's my hope within these videos that, that there's not going to be any smoke and mirrors. I'm going to attempt to uh, read through the documentation and I'm going to uh, do the work that's required, but I'm going to do it in a way that I'm not cheating. I'm not going to stop the video, fix something that isn't working, bring it back to life, etc. The intention is very much is if we run into a particular issue and something isn't quite working the way we expect it to, then I will explain uh, what I've had to do in order to remediate that situation. That might be because there's something not quite right in the documentation that we need to fix. But ultimately, the, the idea is that this will be a realistic demonstration of setting up chocolate within the organization. Now, the other thing that I wanted to point out is that the slight caveat to that is that if I'm doing something that uh, takes a while, I'm doing an installation of a, a package that is known to take a long time to achieve, I'm not going to sit here and just talk while that's happening. I literally will pause the video there and pick it up exactly from uh, where it uh, stopped. Okay, so that's the intention. Uh, I'm going to uh, make available these uh, videos as and when uh, they're available. There's not, there's not a time scale to when these videos are gonna be available. But if you have any questions uh, during the process, feel free to reach out on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle there. So feel free to reach out and ask any questions that you might have. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.